So the Bedouins, when you see these Bedouin tribes, you know, you're looking at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's really what you should think of here. This is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Half-breed, and they were looked down upon by the Jews in Jerusalem. And so when the temple was going to be rebuilt, originally, uh, you know, the Samaritans offered to help. So that was sea level we just passed. idea if I could take him up to Jerusalem to a shoemaker and fix me a couple of or pair of sandals. So here's our group. We are at the uh, at Qumran and we've just been looking at the uh, at the cave number four, the famous cave, and looking in these mountains along the Dead Sea. Caves uh, along this mountain is where the uh, Essenes lived, and Dead Sea Scrolls have been discovered all the way for another hour drive down to Masada. The Dead Sea is right over there, but it's a little misty and we can't see it, but um, there's where the Dead Sea is. Now we're heading back to the bus to go to In the book of Genesis, when God spoke to Abraham and made a covenant with him, he said to him, I will give you all of this land. Chapter 17. I'm not going to read it to you simply because um, I can tell it to explain it. So Genesis chapter 17, God comes to Abraham and said, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with you. You will own this land. I'm going to give you the land. He said, all this land... I will give to you as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your offspring. In other words, even your children will own the deed to this land. God gave Abraham the deed. And it wasn't a conditional deed. It was he's giving this based on his own respect and love for Abraham, who was called the friend of God, the only man in the Bible called the friend of God. He was giving Abraham the, all of this land. And it was for an everlasting covenant, unilateral. And it was for Abraham and for all of his children. And the Jews and the Israelites came here. And they lived on this land for many centuries. Uh, argument for the existence of the Jewish people. So now the Jews, they have this promise to Abraham that they would own this land. And so the Jews come back to this land after the burning in Auschwitz. Imagine now that the Brit Britain says you can have this land. And there we see Mount Masada on your right. Can you imagine living up on top of that for years and years? That is the fortress of Masada built first by King Herod and then taken over by the Jews. And here comes the cable car to pick up our group. We're all going to fit in one cable car, except for a few who went up ahead of us. But here we all are. Our goal, of course, is to go all the way up to the top of Masada, all the way up there. All the way up there. How's everybody doing on the cable car? It's good, huh? Here we go up the mountain. Here we go up the mountain. That's the snake path I went up the other day running. Oh, that would be great. We don't have time to walk this down. There's the cable car station right down there. We just came up on this cable car. Now it's going down to get more. 
In just a few minutes, we'll be going down on that one, but we still have to walk up here to get onto the top of the mountain. So we're walking on the top of Mount Masada now, and we're going to head right up here to where the uh, ramp was that the Romans built. Here comes our group. Here we go. Where the Jewish flag, Israeli flag behind us. Here's our group now at the top of Masada at the Northern Palace. We're at the top level of the palace, and here you can see two more levels that go down. I ran down there the other day, but and then we look north, and Jerusalem is about uh, 100 miles, 90 or so miles, and the Dead Sea is right over there. And here is our group exploring all of this. <laughs> So here we are in the Dead Sea. Oh, we even got one reading a book out here. Floating on their backs. It's a strange sensation. People don't trust me when I say just sit down and don't worry, but once you sit down, you float. I don't float anywhere, but I float in the Dead Sea. Here we're at the Temptation Restaurant in Jericho, and our group is now heading up the stairs. After lunch, I think they'll have plenty of room for time for shopping, if they want to. A lot of glassware, a lot of Dead Sea products here, and this is the stairway up to the uh, to the lunch. Here's everybody coming for the lunch. This is uh, one of the nicer restaurants. They got a lot of food here. Even kebabs and pizzas. So anyway, four lines at once. So here's our group. This is a sycamore tree in the center of Jericho. It's a large one. Nobody would claim it's the sycamore tree of Zacchaeus, but uh, it certainly is one that we can see what kind of tree it was Zacchaeus went up in, in the center of Jericho. 